Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product announcement video for the various 1-6 scale US and German AFE detail components. In this video, I have some new items that have been brought to the catalog for the first time, one of which can be seen right here on the table, as well as I'm going to be having the opportunity to revisit several older catalog items that I had the opportunity to get on video on the table at this time. All of these items, can be found via the links listed below to the various ECA catalog pages that house all of the various vehicles that I do offer detail components in. So stay tuned, there's going to be a bunch of info coming right at you and with that all the way, let's go ahead and kick this video off. Starting this video off brings us to a component that I announced on the Facebook page. I perhaps may have briefly mentioned it on the one of the V100 update videos, but this is the first time I have the actual production units in hand for everyone to see. And to the casual observer, you might just say, well, it's a jerry can, which is neat, but didn't you already go ahead and show an example of one of these units off in a previous video? And the answer is no. First, I want to say thank you, because for you to even say that, that means you watched the other video, and again, I ha you have my thanks for that, but the components that you see here are not the fuel jerry can. These here are the 1-6 scale ECA 3D printed water cans. During World War II, there were two cans that were developed for use with the U.S. military. The first was dedicated for fuel, and then the second was dedicated for water. The cans themselves are basically identical with the exception of the cover cap, and you'll see that momentarily when I go ahead and grab one of the production units and bring it closer to the camera. These units here were developed shortly after I tooled up the fuel can, and then I just went ahead and made the appropriate changes to make it the condition for the water can. As for the can itself, like I mentioned on the fuel one, I actually have an, a real example of a World War II era jerry can for fuel, but I also have another one in my collection that is for water. And I utilized both of those cans to design the sets that we have here. Obviously the water can was used to develop the specific components and changes that were needed to transform it into the one that would be appropriate for that version. So grabbing one of the units here, just like with the other jerry can, they are made in the exact same type of 3D printed material, which I believe is a nylon print. Sadly, I do not have a 3D printer on hand, so all my 3D prints, regardless of the ones I bring on the table, are all outsourced through various vendors. This one here, it's a vendor that utilizes a slightly different manufacturing method compared to the other units that I mentioned. This one here, I believe it's like a resin nylon type print, but the advantage is that the quality on the prints are absolutely flawless. This thing here looks as if it's made out of injection molded plastic. It is that clean. It doesn't have those stereotypical scan lines that we generally see on lots of prints out there, specifically FDM, which is the additive manufacturing that utilizes that type of a setup. And the units are a single printing. Just like with the fuel can, they have Everything integrally printed on detail wise with the exception of the cap that I'll circle back to in a moment But you can see that the can has the distinctive X crimp that's embossed into the side sections the geometry is Completely accurate as are the rounded edges that would be found on the real stamping We have here the correct stamping for the bottom even the little pressed rim that would be found on the real units on the back side here, we have another one of those pressed seam lines. And with the way these cans are designed, they are actually a two-part assembly where we have the body and then we have the top portion. This would actually be slipped in place and then crimped or welded in order to make it uh, liquid tight. And you can see the seam line present here on the ECA counterpart. One difference between the fuel can and the water can is that the fuel can does not have the US stamping on the reverse side, it's only on one of the sides, or at least on the real example that I have, while on the water can here, it is present on both sides. As for the grab handle, again, this is the type of thing that you can really only do with 3D printing, and the handle is integrally printed onto the can over here, so obviously construction is going to be very, very simple. 
As for the handle itself, it has all of the appropriate detailing, which would be found on the real unit. And if anyone's ever seen a real jerry can up close, you'll notice that there's actually quite a bit going on here with the handle. It's not as simple as one might imagine it from, you know, the smaller 135th scale models. So first, the handle on the real unit is actually a single piece of sheet metal that's stamped a bunch of times in order to get the appropriate shape. And all of those details are brought into the ECA one. So on the back portion over here, you will see a spine that is present. On the front portion, it would be a flat plate that is crimped on the ends and you could see the crimp line or the crimping detailing found right here and here. The crimping is also found right here on the half round cutouts. We also have the two holes found on the stamping. Now on the fuel can, this would be a provision for mounting a retention chain, but on the water can, that's not the case, and they're just an appendix, and they're not really used for anything. But you can see the holes are still there. You can also see where the plate mounts to the top of the can, how the piece would be bent, and then spot welded in place. And of course, the handles themselves are rounded. The top portion of the can has the correct geometry of all the rounded surfaces. Which is something that's actually a little tricky to do in CAD, and, and, and luckily I had the real examples on hand to really get a good idea on how the geometry of the section works. And then this leads us to the opening. This is where this can is very different from the fuel one. The fuel one, the opening is much smaller, and the cap is a screw cap. On the water can, the opening is much larger, and the cap is a type of design that has a clasp and it opens up, which you'll see that in a second when I actually go to the clasp detailing. As I mentioned before, the unit is hollow printed. And the cap is actually designed to be fully functional. For the cap components, they are two pieces like you see here. We have here the cap itself. Note the cap does have all of the stamped detailing, which would be present on the real unit found on this section here. The only thing missing would be a gasket found on the inner liner here. I know I'm a slacker, but you know, regardless, you get a good idea on what the piece looks like. The piece is printed drilled out, so the wire or the pin can go into the section over here. And by the way, the hinge is also found on this section on the can, as well as the lock mechanisms. Although the lock mechanisms are more or less for looks, they're not really intended to lock and secure the thing in place, but you know... Uh, we'll see exactly how well that works and is executed once I actually assemble one. But regardless, you can see the detailing there. And by the way, the locks would be uh, uh, spot welded to the lid over here. And we also, by the way, have a lip found on the neck. I forgot to mention that before. Back to the cap. So that's basically everything on the cap itself. Again, all the geometry on all these sections were lifted directly off of my real example. And for the lash, that the same is definitely true. It has the look, the shape, and the feel of the real unit. And the real unit is made, again, out of a simple stamping. So they just ka a bazillion of these things. And then within, like, maybe one or two stamps, they have the unit ready for assembly. On the inside here, everything you notice is scale thickness. And it really does look like everything is pressed and folded to the shape that we'll be pressing on the real counterpart. The set also includes some hardware so we have three small sewing pins over here but i'm on the fence if what if these are going to be utilized or if i'm just going to replace them with a length of wire both methods will get you the same result one of these units by the way is for myself as a test piece the other two are spoken for and they will be packaged and shipped to the customer shortly after i'm done recording this scene over here and after i'm done assembling one of these sample units so i know exactly where i'll stand with the hardware supply but regardless you will either get some pins or a length of wire in order to hinge all of the class details together which you'll see what that looks like momentarily so after a minute or two, the unit assembles very, very quickly. The sewing pins did the job absolutely perfectly, and that's how we're going to be shipping them from this point onward. So the latch itself, the lugs are non-functional, but the cap itself is able to actuate and open up like the real one. So on the real one, in order to unlock, you would take this latch over here and you would position it outward like this. On the real unit, when this rotates, it would unlock from these two lugs that are found on the neck section. And then this would allow you to flip the cap open. 
like so, and then you would basically hold the cap in place and then you would pour out the water found on the inside. One thing that's interesting to point out is that you can see from the geometry over here on the latch it has this distinctive cutout and this was so like when I showed before you can open it up and the latch does not interfere with the opening of the lid by making contact with the third handle found right here on the center portion. From here this thing is going to be painted and weathered and then it could be added to my collection. So in an interesting turn of events, a day or so after the filming of the previous scene with the water can, I had a shipment f dropped off by the postman from my printer that contained none other than some more fuel jerry cans. A number of these cans here are already spoken for and are going to be dispatched out to their owners. But regardless, before I go ahead and do that, here you get to see what the cans look like and the difference between the fuel can as well as the water can in more depth. So here we have the water can from the previous scene with the latch already secured on in place. And here you get to see the ECA fuel jerry can. Like I stated before, the detailing on the two are basically identical with the exception of the embossing of the US mark, which is on both sides on the water can, while it's not present on the fuel can. But the fuel can does have the G found in the top portion, and that is something that is not found on the water can. Top of that, you can see the difference with the size of the hole for the water versus the fuel. And also, obviously, the cap is very, very different between the two. Here we have the fuel cap, which on the fuel unit is completely removable, which is why it necessitates the need for a retention chain, which is obviously something that is supplied and it's going to be it's going to be added to these sets when it comes time for packaging. But you could see how that works in or comparison to the water can that has the latch built in. Also, in case I didn't mention before, on the ECA catalog, these cans are sold in a multitude of different formats where you can get them individually. Or you can get them in a package deal where you have the option to either get them all the same type or you can mix and match and have a number of them of different types. So if it's a four pack, you can get two of the water, two of the fuel, or you can just get four of one specific type. This is all boils down to the discretion and the needs of the person who is purchasing the components and you could customize them accordingly. Oop. <laughs> and you could customize them accordingly. Regardless, here you get to see the two ECA pieces side by side. Outside of those few differences, the pieces are identical in all the other ways mentioned. Also, I have the opportunity to point this out. On the table, in addition to the fuel cans, I also have a number of the jerry can holders. These ones here are the post World War II versions. These are the exact same units that I utilize on my V100 armor car. In fact, that's why I designed the set. But here you get to see the production sets on hand. And I do have, at the moment, these four. These are four extra. They are a production overrun. And they are available for immediate shipping. So at the time you're watching this video, if you're interested in the post-World War II versions of these can holders, they can be purchased and no waiting is required by the manufacturing. Obviously, they're all here on stock and are available for immediate dispatch. Of course, these are first come first serve. So, you know, whoever, uh, if you see these and you're interested in them, I would recommend ordering them sooner than later. On that note, in addition to the can holders, the can holders also come with several bits of brass hardware, namely hex bolts. It comes with a length of gr uh, olive green webbing, and it also comes with a 3D printed latch detail that is used to tie everything together. Again, more information on that is discussed in more depth in the V100 video, but here you get to see these units here on the table. These ones here are made out of a slightly different material compared to the standard production units, as these are made with the exact same resin material as the rest of the jerry cans. So just like with the jerry cans, they are basically injection molded quality with the overall surface texture. Detailing on them is all the features that I mentioned in the other video, but when it comes to these can holders, there are two patterns, World War II and post-World War II, and the difference lies with some of the crimps that are found on the sheet metal. 
The World War II ones have a slightly different pattern of embossing compared to the post-war ones, which were simplified somewhat. But regardless, both visually look almost identical, with the exception of those small little details that I just mentioned. Continuing along takes us to another item that's been on the catalog now for about mm, two or so years. But this is really the first time I've had the opportunity to bring it onto the table, so I might as well take the opportunity to do so since I have a production set in my hand right now. What you're looking at are the ECA 3D printed Tiger One lower hull fuel tank set. This component here was a replacement for a legacy item that was on the catalog for a number of years prior, which were the same exact items, however those were made in cast resin. Obviously these ones here retired those older sets as they are in 3D print and are much better compared to the older ones and you'll see why in a moment. So the biggest difference between the two sets is that the old one was a single cast resin component, while this one here is a hollow 3D print. Also, with the 3D print technology, it allows me to do other things and add extra detailing that were just not easy or even possible with the cast resin counterpart. So, bringing us to these components over here, here you can see the entire set listed on the table. And by the way, in addition to this set, there is another set that's offered on the catalog that's a little bit lower in cost, that offer the same exact components, just minus the back sections that we have here and here. Those type of sets are intended for use specifically in a Tiger One interior engine bay, and since these things are gonna be tucked inside the engine bay, having the backs to them is really not relevant for that application, so the need to spend the extra money for the extra backs are just not necessary. But if you are a completist out there and you want to have the full fuel tank because damn it, I want the, fuel, the full fuel tank, well, this set's gonna be for you where it gives you both the front and back sections all fully detailed. So starting with the top fuel tank, Here's the unit right here. In order to come up with the dimensions, I had some very excellent resources available, and all of the details that were found on those resources were able to trickle down into the 3D printed counterpart. So the units are made all of stamped metal, and they had this very distinctive X crimp pattern to them. As you can see, the details were brought over into the ECA one, to the way you see it here. In addition to the X crimps, there is a center bulkhead on the inside and you can see how it's riveted in place. Again, just true to form to the real one. On the outer portions, we see several connections for the fuel lines and breather lines. And although the lines are not supplied with the set, they are fully drilled out. So the only thing the builder has to do is just supply some electrical wire that's the same size. And this will facilitate the plumbing detailing. With the way the pieces are, you really don't need to drill them out and you just basically stick the wire in place with a little drop of glue and you should be good to go. On the bottom portion over here, we have a little drainage plug right there. Note the hex detailing on that section as well as has a little tombstone shaped stamping. Same is also true for the rigidity sections on these two sides. And on the reverse tank, it's in a slightly different format where we have more of these rivet patterns, but we also have this extra plate section that we have right here. On the real one, it's actually folded together and you can see those folds present on the ECA 3D printing. We also have, again, some more rivets right here along the front edge, as well as more rigidity strips. And we do have some more drainage fasteners right there and there. Of course, just like with the other unit, it has the fuel line and breather line details that are present. Now, like I stated before, the units are hollow and you can see that they are hollow right here but there is a little bit of extra equipment on the inside that I'll mention in a moment the way these sets are designed is that we have the backings right over here and these simply just get glued and slipped into place with the way the backings are they are not symmetrical so you cannot screw them up and one goes to its specific fuel tank which makes assembly much easier as you can see it's a perfect fit I don't want to slip it in all the way because there's a little bit of detailing on the inside, but you get the idea. As for the backings, they mirror the other details mentioned on the front. So this one over here with the X crimp, you can see that detailing mirrored on this section again with the same rivets as, as mentioned earlier. And on this one here, the X crimps are absent. However, you do have the distinctive detailing found on that zigzag section of rivets. 
as I mentioned before, there are a little bit of equipment found on the inside. These little boxes over here are, I believe, a valve of some sort. All the lines plumb into them and then they go out to the various other components found in the fuel system. As for the actual plumbing itself, this is seen on several reference materials that are out there on the internet, as well as also some books. I should have one of the books listed in the video description below, depending if I can find the book on Amazon, I should be able to have the link listed there. There, it's a good resource, and it's actually what I use whenever I built a Tiger one with a full interior, and you get a good idea on what the plumbing situation looks like, which is actually a video all on its own, and at some point I'll do another Tiger one with the full interior detailing, or the full engine compartment detailing again and you know I'll be able to uh, mention more about that in more depth with the more modern parts that we have here. Regardless though all of these pieces were again inspired off of the real counterpart and they are fully detailed with all of the appropriate fittings that would be found on the actual unit. Obviously in order to assemble these you just snip this little stem off of here on the inside take the piece out, clean it off further by snipping off that other little sprue, and then you can glue the rear portion on, and now you have your completed fuel tank. One big difference between this one and the earlier sets is again, not just with the backing, but also with the strap detailing. And that is again where the 3D printing technology really comes into its own. So in addition to the fuel tanks themselves, you also get the straps which secure them to the engine compartment on the Tiger One. Here you can see the straps in full detail. Note, they are as detailed as I can possibly make. We have the hinge section, which would be welded to the tank itself. And then we have the securing straps, which would be steel straps that are then folded over and riveted in place. And again, all those detailings are there to see. And we even have the buckle strap detailing right here, where we have the strap and then there's a small little fastener right there in the center and basically to tighten it you would go in there with a monkey wrench and rotate either left or right and this would pull the sections together thus strapping the units in place. Because these are 3D printed they are preformed and shaped to fit perfectly around the unit right here and these are a single printing so because of that there's no guesswork or adjustments required you literally just basically snip them off and secure them onto their appropriate locations on the ECA website I actually have a picture or a CAD sample of one of these units with the straps in place so you get an idea exactly which ones go where and how they get fitted in place but it's a really cool system to see once all decked out obviously when you're freeing these components off of the sprue you just snip off the backs right here these four sections, one, two, three, and four, as well as these other four sections here, and then the sprue falls away, and then you have the component as a single piece. Whatever you do, do not snip these in half. They are not intended for that. These units are a one size pre-fit type fitting, and by snipping them, you're basically negating that. So if you're getting one of these sets, uh, be aware, do not snip these. These are not sprues, these are details. These are the sprues, so we we'll have to make that perfectly clear. Also, uh, not, I want to mention this at this time, but in addition to the lower hull fuel tanks, I also have the upper hull fuel tanks for the Tiger One as well. Those units are the ones that are mounted directly below the grill work, and again, these details are found on the ECA catalog, along with the air ducts that are actually on top of the fuel tanks, because you don't exactly see the fuel tanks on a Tiger One. You actually see a duct, then the fuel tank is safely concealed below it. But regardless, the fuel tanks are there, they are listed on the ECA catalog, and they too are hollow 3D printed, along with a little rubber uh, spill type fitting. But you know what? At some point in time, I'm going to have another one come across my desk, and when that happens, I'll gladly include it in that video, and it'll be really cool to get that on desk, you know, on video for all of you to enjoy, or even when I do slash, if slash when I do another Tiger One, because, you know, generally, uh, when a Tiger One comes across my shop, it usually gets a full interior detailing, but regardless, um, that is going to be something for another video for another day, but what I'm, basically what I'm saying is that I have both, I have the complete fuel system for the Tiger One, including the lower hull fuel tanks and the upper hull fuel tanks, amongst many other fittings, all again, all of which are listed on the ECA catalog. Continuing with the video takes us to the set that we have here. This is another set that's been recently released. However, this is the first time I actually had the opportunity to get this particular set on table. What you're looking at here is the ECA 1.6 scale 3D printed Schwimmwagen MG set. The Schwimmwagen 
mount set is something that I've touched upon in a number of videos that came out earlier. However, in those videos, I mentioned that the sets are offered in three different materials. We have them made in metal, we have them made in HD 3D print, and this one here is the version made out of nylon 3D print. And just like with those other sets, the pieces are offered in a multitude of different configurations. This one here is the simple set for the Schwimmwagen, where we have the mount as well as the mounting stem that's for the front passenger side of the Schwimmwagen. There's another version for the Schwimm where we have this unit, but a second mount that's paired with it. And that's in case you want to add a gunner's position to the rear portion of the vehicle. Then there are also versions where we have just the mount alone in a pair configuration. So again, there are lots of different options available and this all depends on what type of usage you have in mind for your set. The only other difference again is the material. The pieces are made with the exact same CAD files that are found on the other two options. And this one here is utilizing the exact same stem that's found on all three of the counterparts, be it the metal or the HD resin 3D print one. So there's no point going over this detailing over here. I've already touched upon that in the other videos, but it comes with the piece of aluminum here that's made to be a bent into a bracket that secures to the bottom portion of the vehicle. And we have a, mount, a wire brad over here that's used to secure this piece into place that'll give it more strength and allow you to hand fit it to fit on the vehicle of your choice or the Schwimmwagen of your choice, I should say. As for the mount, Again, this one here is probably the most affordable of the three options available, being the white nylon, and the piece is more durable compared to the HD 3D print one. However, this does come at the cost of fine detail fidelity. This one here, it's actually really, really good for the material that it is printed in. However, the HD 3D printed one admittedly does have finer detailing on the surface compared to this one here. But this one, again, is the more affordable option and it's far more durable and it's less likely or it's more uh, durable in taking a shock or a bump into it compared to the rest and counterpart. Regardless, for the material that's printed in, you still have all of the exact same details that were represented and mentioned in the other videos. This would include the little mounting fastener that we have right over there, the locking tab, the ring of welds, hopefully it comes into focus, as well as the two fastener sections found on the retention bolts. The yoke section is also, again, fully detailed as it is on the other units, and it just simply just slides in place over here, and then you could pin it together either with two smaller pins cut to length, or if you so wish to do so, you could actually glue it to the MG, drill a hole directly through, and pin the entire thing solid, which will be the most strongest way to mount it in that configuration. But regardless, that is best left up to discretion of the builder. Again, all of the versions of this mount here are listed on the ECA catalog page, found in the video description below. And while we're on a roll highlighting older components, here we have another older component that again has been brought to the table basically for the first time, or at least on video. What we have here is the ECA turned wood German AFV shovel handle set. The shovel handle that we have here has been on the catalog now since I want to say about 2010, so it's been a while since it's been on the catalog. And these are on the catalog in two configurations. We have the untreated version, which is the one we have here, and the treated version. Both of these sets are individually handmade by me on my lathe. I go ahead and turn them out to the configuration that you see here. These components are good for basically almost every German World War II AFV from the Schwimmwagen to the Tiger and anywhere else in between. They all have shovels and generally when you buy an aftermarket piece, the shovels are either made out of cast metal depending on the vendor or they are molded in plastic, for instance, say on the Dragon Schwimmwagen or even their Panzer II. Regardless, if anyone is looking to replace those sets with a nice turned wooden one, ECA has your back and like I say, they come in two configurations natural wood, and also treated format. The choice is yours. Another catalog item that is a recent addition, but it's the first time I was able to get on camera, is this following part that we have here. This here is the production version of the ECA post-World War II US AFE Siren set. This component was designed up when I was working on the V100 armor car, and if we 
turn our clocks back to that project, I went ahead and designed this exact component. However, the one on that model is slightly different than this one here. That one specifically made for the V100, and the difference is that that one has a bracket that's built into the printing so that that unit's ready for installation on that vehicle without any sort of prep work. This one over here is just for use on generic US armored fighting vehicles, be it from the M151 Mutt to the M60 to the M48, whatever. If it's a post-war vehicle, tends to get this type of siren that fitted in place. The unit is made all out of HD 3D printing. And this unit here is an example of the current production version with this yellowish resin type material. It's funny, as I frequently mention, this material reminds me of the old cast resin parts from the 1990s, but the two are very, very different. Regardless, you can see what the details look like up close. The older units were made out of a translucent material, but now they are opaque, and in a way it's kind of better because you really get to appreciate the detailing before the unit is fully painted. The unit was referenced off of a real siren just like this that I have in my personal collection, and I was able to take the measurements and everything required off of that example to transpond them onto the smaller counterpart. This thing here is as realistic as I can possibly make it, and one of the features that it has is the interior baffle detailing that's underneath the perforated cap that we have right here. And you could also see the rivets, how they alternate around the outer portion. Again, as per the real one, this, the detailing is not just found on the front, but on the back section as well. These two sections here are where the power cords would emerge from, and of course I go into more detail about that in the V100 video, but regardless, you have to see what the detail looks like on this following unit. Also, we have the mounting bracket integrally built into the section over here, and the way this works is that you would snip the center column right over here with a clean cut snip, and then these units here that have the fastener details integrally printed on, these here would just sandwich onto a mounting bracket of your choice. So. The units are basically ready for installation out of the box to whatever custom fit bracket that you so envision. These units here are listed on the ECA Softskin and the M15 Mutt catalog pages and they can be found in the video description links listed below. Carrying along is the functional Jeep tow hitch. This component here was a replacement for a cast resin counterpart that was on the catalog since 2005. And about two or three years ago, I went ahead and phased that and retired that set and brought this one here to the catalog. The unit is very similar, if anyone's ever watched my V100 video, to the V100 set. And also, it's also used on the M151 set that may or may not I actually have on hand right now and maybe making this debut on the table. But regardless, the component is all encompassing where it is a single 3D print. It's all made out of HD material. And what's nice about it is that the part is functional where if we had this little latch over here, you flip that up, piece opens up, locks down, and now the hitch is in its open position. To close it, lift up, slide it down, and it just locks. And now the piece is locked in the closed position. Unlike the original cast resin one, which was, did the exact same type of functions here, that one was com uh, com uh, encompassing of about four or five different components that had to be cleaned and assembled and hand fitted together. Obviously, with this one here, that's not the case. It's a single print and it's ready to go. Also supplied with this set here are the trailer rings that are located on the two bottom portions. And these are used to hook up the safety chains for the trailer of one sort or another that the Jeep would pull. These, of course, are... 3D printed as well and are connected to the piece. You snip them off and then you can mount them on. Also supplied with the set are two brass fasteners and four brass nuts. The brass fasteners are used to actually secure the thing in place. The resin pieces here are not threaded in any way, shape, or form. They're just there primarily for looks. With the piece being HD 3D printed, this is not exactly something that's functional per se, in that, yes, it works. However, because of the resin material that this is made in, it's not exactly recommended for you to actually tow something with it. So it's primarily there just for looks. For the other two bolts over here, I should say the nuts over here, you are going to have to widen the holes with a Dremel bit just so that it slips over the resin piece with a little bit more efficiency as opposed to the way it is right now where it is threaded. So that is something I do want to mention for anyone who gets one of these pieces and are going to do an installation. Another option is to just replace these with a larger type, not that you can find in any hardware store of your choice. Regardless, here's the new, or I should say the current set from ECA. 
Something else I also want to mention about an older catalog item are these lens cap sections that we have here. These components I've mentioned, or I should say I announced when I did my 1.6 scale Jeep trailer builds. However, since the time that those videos came out, here you get to see the current catalog components. They are exactly the same CAD files as the ones previously mentioned, it's just the material now has been slightly changed. The components now are much more clear compared to the way they were before. And here you get to see what they look like. Note the detailing on them is nice and crisp. And the idea with the components being made out of a clear printed material is that you don't paint the outer portion of the lens, you actually paint the inner portion of the lens with the color of your choice. With these here being reflectors, you would paint the backing red, and then you would carefully paint the outer rim with the color of your vehicle. When this sets, you get a very realistic look compared to trying to paint it if it was made out of an opaque material. And to wrap up this video, here we have the same water jerry can that I mentioned before, but now it has been fully painted and weathered. The painting and weathering techniques are the same techniques that I've mentioned in many of the other videos that are found on this channel, being both small and large scale, but basically it's painted with the airbrush and then weathered with the use of airbrushing as well as a little bit of dry brushing. The only thing that has not been added to the can at this time is some varnish, but this is something I'm probably going to add right after the filming of the scene. But either way, as you can see, once the unit is fully painted and weathered, it just looks absolutely awesome. Like I mentioned before, the material that these things are printed in is very, very smooth, and like I mentioned earlier, the thing basically looks like it was made out of injection molded polystyrene as opposed to something that is a 3D printed material. With all of the weather work, you really get to see those details that I mentioned before in much better light. Some little <laughs> powder here on from just some sawdust, but regardless, you can see everything is really looking great. And the cap here is still fully functional, as you can see. This here is going to be a very nice addition to add to the collection, and if I had a vehicle to display this on, it would definitely be something that could be added to the model that would make it look all that much more whole and just give it a little bit of extra flavor. And with that, that wraps up this new product announcement video for the various 1.6 scale US and AFE detail components. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posts of content being 1.6 scale and 1.16 scale new product announcement videos like the one you just watched, or the other typical content, which would consist of small and larger scale model showcase videos and project update videos when they get posted. Another way to stay in the loop of new posts of content is by liking us on Facebook, where I have more photographs of all of the builds that I post here on the channel, as well as also this is where I generally first announce new products that are going to be added to the ECA catalog. And on that note, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, I'll be seeing you all again on the next one. Take care.